Sandy uh, is a skilled front-end developer and technical writer who's passionate about the ever-changing world of technology uh, with expertise in open source development and a drive to explore cutting-edge technologies. Currently, Sandy is a vital member of the team developing the Open Innovation MOOCs platform at the Open Science Community Saudi Arabia. And Sandy has also played a role in the localization chapter of the Turing Way. Uh, Richie is a software engineer specializing in developing back-end systems for front-end applications. Uh, Richie is also a passionate advocate for open source software development. He's contributed significantly to several open source projects as an outreach intern, including the Open Science Community Saudi Arabia and the Turing Way. Uh, and through these projects, Richie has focused on optimizing research practices and enhancing accessibility to promote innovation and progress in the field of technology. So uh, I'll hand over now to, uh, to Sandy and Richie. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I'll just go ahead to share my screen. Thank you, Simon. All right. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so I'm very excited to be talking about this particular topic. Uh, I'm excited to be talking about localization. It's a topic I'm very passionate about. And I'll be talking about localization in the open science community. It's a work in progress. And I'm just going to talk about how we do it in the open science community as regards to the Tony Way community. All right. So a brief introduction. My name is Good News Sandy. And I'm a software developer and I'm also an open science contributor and I'm also part of the translation team in the Tony Way community. And I have a co-presenter, Richie. Richie, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay, thank you very much. So my name is Richie Bolulu. I'm a backend developer at Open Science Saudi Arabia and I'm also a contributor to the Turin Way community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richie. Okay, so uh, I want to talk briefly about the Tony Way community itself. And it's a community that is uh, focused on data science and reproducible research. Uh, the community provides information for data scientists and researchers to be able to make uh, their project reproducible, to make their project ethical, open, and collaborative for everyone. So the Tony Way community uh, encourages uh, data scientists, researchers, and leaders to use our guide a documentation to able to understand their roles and responsibility on how to make their project reproducible, ethical and open and accessible for everyone. Uh, it's, uh, it's something we're excited to do. It's something we are happy to do. And we have, uh, we have ways, we have guides, a couple of guides uh, and ways we're doing this. And the reproducibility is, uh, we're trying to ensure that your project can be reusable. It can be used by different people in different locations. It can be used by different people with different cultures. And also in line with making sure that the project is reproducible, we had to come up with different other guides still in line with reproducible, which includes project design, communication, collaboration, and ethical research. So these are other guides that have been added to the reproducibility guide in the Tony way, just to ensure that we have uh, a guide that is holistic and available to all. And also we have the community handbook. The community handbook serves as uh, a record of all the practices in the Tony way community. It also shows the activities and contributions that has been done in the Tony way community. The uh, handbook also serves as a as, as, as a source of documentation for other open science community to adopt the practice and other things they want to do in their documentation. Okay, so the Tony Way community have grown. We have grown over in three years and we have up to 170 sub chapters in our guide. And we also have resources. We have uh, uh, templates, you have uh, training materials that keeps the contributors active so that they're able to navigate the guide and also for interested members to come in and be able to navigate the guides that we have in the Tony way. We have over 200 direct uh, GitHub contributors and over thousands of users that are using our resources to be able to get the information there and to be able to use it in their project. We also have uh, social media links where we get to promote our guides. 
where we get to talk about what the Tony Web community is doing and how people can use it to, you know, make their project with this and uh, reproducible. Okay, so uh, to jump right into uh, multilingualism in open science as related to localization in the Tony Web community. Uh, I'm just going to talk briefly on why we are actually doing this. Why are we interested in localization in the Tony way, in open science? Why are we interested in doing this? So the uh, reason why we are doing this is because we want to make our guide accessible to everyone, especially to non-English speaking audience. We know we have a diverse audience. Uh, our, guide is, uh, our guide is for a global audience. So we have to ensure that it can be used by a lot of people. So we are trying to make it accessible. We are trying to make it inclusive and transparent. And that's why we integrate translation into our guide. Also, by making it transparent and accessible, we are opening it up for a lot of diverse view views and perspective from different regions of the world. People bringing in their perspective, understanding and knowledge to be able to make our that more comprehensive and more detailed. We understand that, uh, we have a guide that is beneficial to a lot of people and a lot of people, a lot of users are happy to use it. So we also we are working in trying to make sure that localization is integrating into integrated the localization is available. People can understand the language of the of the uh, of the guide, so to say. Unequal contribution. Uh still in line with why we are trying to do this, to understand that uh there's an uh, unequal, unequal comp contribution in the knowledge production. What that means is that not everybody is able to be able to contribute to our guide because of issues like not, um, language barriers. So we are actually trying to integrate uh, localization into our guide so that we're able to solve issues like this. Also to be able to identify potential bias, potential bias in the sense that we don't want our guide to be one-sided. Uh, you know, we don't want it to be one-sided. We want it to capture everybody's uh, perspective, everybody's culture, everybody's uh, um, knowledge about uh, uh, open science and uh, their research, right? So that you can see from the map that we have, uh, the green area shows where we have more people contributing to uh, to knowledge production, right? So things like this could be because of language barrier. And that's why in the translation team, we are trying to ensure that we break such barriers. Okay, so before we go right in, I want to talk briefly about some terminologies that we use when we are talking about translation and localization. Like internationalization is designing and developing your project to be able to adapt to different cultures, to adapt to regions and languages. So what uh, internalization is simply is uh, something you do when you are designing your project, right? So it's something that you take a account of uh, you do when you're trying to design your project and ensure that your system is set up, your system is working, is set up such that it can accept localization. So you are ensuring things like your source code, the project uh, structure, and ensuring that things like the format, the, uh, the time zone, things about the system of your project, it sets up during the design phase to ensure that it can accept localization, it can accept uh, localization in different language in the future or anytime it needs to be integrated in. So internationalization is something you do before even starting out your project. It's done during the design phase, right? And it facilitates localization. It helps you to be able to you know, localize your project. So localization comes in after internationalization where you are able to ensure that the uh, translated text is uh, a reflection of the, uh, the culture of the user. What that means is that you are trying to adapt the project to ensure that it reflects the culture of the translated uh, language. So things like alignment, things like uh, the text length and special characters are all accounted for to ensure that the user of that particular language understands even examples and expressions of the text when it is translated to, to a particular language. The user of that language understands the meaning of that expression and example without losing the context in the original translated text, right? So localization is more detailed. You have to ensure that even the context is still maintained, but then you're able to capture the understanding of the user for that particular language. So localization takes translation one step further and translation 
involves transforming the text to a particular language, right? So it's basically transforming one text to another in different or uh, in different languages. And we have the translation management system, where it's basically the whole localization process from start to end, and you have a finished translate, a translated documentation. All right. Uh, so to specifically talk about localization as regards its own new way, uh, it's not really an easy task, and we're actually active on it and working on it. We actually capitalize on recent technologies to ensure that our guides are accessible, they're properly translated to the language of the user, right? And we do this using different technologies. And also we share and document our translation journey in the community handbook, which is going to talk about uh, collaborative documentation. And sharing and documenting our translation journey actually helps new members and people that are interested to contribute, you know, to make it easier for them to understand what we are doing and how we are doing it makes it more accessible, right? And we also have the Book Dash event. Uh, the Book Dash event is a collaborative effort that we have in the Tony way where we sit down and we talk about how we can make the translation process easier, how we can make it smooth, how we can make it accessible. So we are reviewing existing structures, we are reviewing existing uh, resources available to make it more accessible for people to use and also up to date with current uh, technologies. So we do that during the Book Dash event. So some of the challenges we have encountered uh, includes support for right to left languages like Arabic, right? So uh, like the Arabic language, right? So we have to ensure that it actually really is, it's, it represents what Arabic language should look like. So if a user is looking at it, it should be able to read the Arabic language. So those are some of the a little bit of challenges you may have uh, in terms of alignment on text direction, when we're actually on it. And we also, in exploring different options, right now we are using crowding for translation and also managing multi-language deployment in terms of infrastructure. So we have different language, some of them right to left and some of them left to right. So handling uh, the alignment and some things regarding multiple language can be a daunting task sometimes. Okay, uh, you can choose your part for interested contributors that want to join us. We are doing a couple of things. We you can join us in translating in also reviewing the existing documentation. You could join us in proofreading what is already available and also documentation. We like to document our translation journey and you can also uh, promote our guide and also help us in whatever capacity. You don't necessarily need to have understanding of GitHub. We have our resources and uh, materials to help you to uh, be able to contribute to our guide. So in Slack, we are, we are in Slack and a couple of things we do is participate in the book dash and we have collaboration cafes twice in a week, twice in a month rather, where we get to basically talk about how we can improve our translation process. The outreach, also uh, we have interns from outreach. I started out as an intern from outreach and I've been part of the community in translation and I'm very excited to be doing the amazing work there. And we also have the translation co-working section every Tuesday where we get to talk about uh, different ways to improve translation process, the existing ones, what can be done with viewing documentation, and also inviting uh, external contributors, right? People from other communities to come in and talk about how they are handling localization in their documentation. So they share their knowledge, we talk about it, we share what we have, and we gain better knowledge on how to improve translation in the Tony Way community. Okay, so I'm going to hand it over to Richie Ye. Yeah? to talk about collaborative documentation in this only way. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So I'll be sharing my screen now. Okay. Okay, so basically, I'll be talking about collaborative documentation and how it has been implemented within the Turing Way community. Now, by collaborative documentation, what do we really mean? Collaborative documentation basically refers to a process of creating and maintaining knowledge resources through active participation of multiple individuals. More often than not, it will involve exchange of knowledge between these individuals and also building with diverse teams around the world. 
Now, within the two rooms, there are certain qualities of values we focus on, which is one, we focus on good documentation practices as a way to promote transparency, reproducibility, and access to research. So we might wonder how good documentation aligns with transparency, reproducibility, and access, of, um, access to research. One, in a way, it documenting methods and procedures, collaborative documentation can provide a detailed record of the methods and procedures used to generate findings and also complete projects. This documentation can ensure that this project, this work is reproducible by others and results can also be also be indiv independently verified. Another thing we also focus on is that we also place a strong emphasis on localization, which means adapting research practices to different cultural contexts and making it more accessible to diverse communities. By doing this, we try to localize our resources, make it available to a wider um, user base because there are some cases where some of these resources um, might not be available to certain parts of the world based on the, op the gap in knowledge production, one, and the barrier in language. So that's why we also implement localization and translation to make these resources available worldwide. We also believe in the importance of open infrastructure as a way to level the playing field for researchers and promote equity in research environments. By open, open infrastructure basically provides researchers with access to a range of tools and resources that they might not otherwise have access to due to, let's say, financial or institutional constraints. This includes access to high performance computing resources, data storage, storage platforms, and collaborative software tools. By providing these, um, by providing these resources in an open and accessible way, open infrastructure can help to reduce the disparities in resources that exist between self-funded institutions and on the resourced ones. Now moving on, another um, good benefit of um, collaborative documentation is that it improves community engagement. It provides a means for communi communication and dialogue. It's it, one way it does this by involving community members in different different practices. One way we do this in the general way community is through our book dash like previous speaker already talked about. And for collaborative documentation, by providing a platform co for collaborative documentation, Community members can work together to create to create content of this content, refer, refine inf information in a way that's inclusive and accessible to others. Another way um, collaborative doc documentation improves community engagement is that it facilitates knowledge sharing. It does this by sharing, by providing a shared space for knowledge sharing where members of the community can learn from each other, share best practices, and build upon each other's work. It also promotes transparency in the sense that you have to document the processes, procedures, and decision making, where community members can also understand how the decisions are being made and the factors are taken into consideration. Now, moving on, there are some best practices that we focus on within the Turinu community, one of which is use of open and accessible tools that's relating to open infrastructure. The reason why is that we try to use tools that are acceptable worldwide, are being used worldwide. Are no, set, let's say a few number of people might be restricted from using this. So, like in case of data, where certain countries can't really assess certain resources. So, it would be um, best practice to use tools that are being accessible worldwide to encourage more contributions. And we'll also establish clear documentation standards such that the documentation will be uniform throughout. You don't want to see disparities between the um, fonting or styling or standards of the documentation. We we'll also encourage diverse participation, like in the book dash where we welcome participants from all over the world and we maintain version control and attribution, use of visuals as a way to bring more and expressive illustrations of what we're trying to portray and encourage inclusivity. Now for acknowledgements, we are working to acknowledge all our contributors and leads by adding their names both to the readme and the book. So we also provide a separate section within the Turing Way book where we highlight all our contributors and whatever they contributed. You can also highlight um, extra work they have done, even if it's not relating to the Turing Way community. So now here's a um, brief view of all our contributors. We're currently about more than 300 um, contributors to the Turing Way community. And if you would like to join the community, please feel free. And here's a few links to the Turing Way book. If you want to join the, um, if you want to go through the book, you can just follow the link. Here's our Twitter page and our GitHub for contribution. 
Thank you very much. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Richie and, and Sandy. That was fascinating. Um, so if anyone has questions, please um, feel free to put those in the chat and I'll um, put them to, to Sandy and Richie. Um, I noticed there was one from Danny. Um, Batul has, has answered it, I think, to some degree, but I'll put it to you both as, as well. Um, and Richie, I think that, that Danny posted this when you were um, uh, during your part of the presentation. It was about how many people participate in the bi-weekly discussions uh, and how do you communicate given the range of languages? Okay, so um, the bi-weekly sessions, we can we break down the session into different groups. So let's say if you're a Spanish speaker, you can join the session where um, Spanish speakers are. So, and for the number of participants, they vary. And all, all manner of participants, wherever you're coming from, you're all welcome. Uh -huh. I think that answers the question does thank you yeah. any other questions from the, the audience I, I did have one one actually i mean when you were talking about um collaborative documentation um yeah. one of the things you mentioned richie was it's important to encourage inclusivity um yeah. And I wondered if you had any suggestions about how groups can do that. Like, what are some of the practical things that kind of collaborative groups can do to encourage that inclusivity? Okay, one one way you can do that is like the way we do it within the turn way community. We organize the book dash, and we uh, we um, send out an invite or something like a form where all participants. There's no discrimination. You can apply, and it's just a seamless process. You can apply whatever you want to contribute to the tune even if you're not going to contribute well some participants might feel okay i'm not really technically inclined so i might not be able to contribute to this particular project but no there are different different ways you can contribute to the project you can contribute through documentation you can contribute through design or you can even just go there to listen so you don't really need to feel bad or say okay my background is not really um good or so uh -huh. so that just basically it's we accept all manner of persons from whatever background they came from Thanks. Do you have anything to add, Sandy? No. Yeah. And Sandy, I was interested. Um, I was interested in learning a bit more about Outreachy. Um, yeah. It is a cool name, but I don't know much about it. Could you could you talk a little bit more about that program? Okay. okay oh. So, uh, okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. Uh, let me let me just go. Okay. So Outreach is basically an organisation that. Um, it offers an internship, paid internship to, so not just software developers, just people who code, and they visually aim at improving inclusivity. So for cases where you're underrepresented or feel maybe you're not really being allowed into the tech space, that so they provide an encouraging community for others to learn how to code. You get to train on real world projects uh, in most cases. So that's just basically what they do. They offer paid internship to really underrepresented people around the world. Sandy, anything to, to add there? Okay, to add to what Ia said, uh, Outreachy is it's, uh, it's basically an internship program where we have uh, contributors across, across the uh, people that are interested to contribute to open source. Right, so I started out with Outreachy. It's a, a three month program. You can contribute to any project, any open source project of your choice you uh, contribute and you can go ahead, you know, to work with them afterwards. But it's just a development process where you get to do a lot of things for the community. It's an opportunity for you to contribute to a community, get to know more about open source, basically. Yeah. That's excellent. Well, thank you both very thank much. You. Is there any final call for any questions? Otherwise, we'll we'll move on to our uh, our next presenter. No. Okay, well, look, thank you so much, uh, Sandy and Richie. We really appreciate thank um, you. that talk. It was really interesting uh, and best of luck for the future. Um, okay. Okay, I think someone has a question. Oh. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry oh. what was that? From Alien. It's okay. I think it was applause, actually. Oh, rather thank than a hand you. raise. Thank you. Well deserved applause. Um, oh, thank thank you. you. No problem. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
Um, so we'll move to our second um, talk for this session um, by Anak Agong um, called COVID-19 and the Future of Accountancy in Digital Perspectives. Uh, Agong has been Assistant Professor in the Department of Accounting at the Universitas Erlanga since 2005. Um, his research focus is accounting information systems, qualitative methods, sustainability and big data. Um, and he's working on several research projects and international collaborations and supervises several international students in the Nusantara project, AIBPM. Um, so Agung, over to you. I think you may have frozen. Can you hear me again? Oh, there we go. Uh, yes, uh, can you see okay, my slide? Hi. Yes, that's, that's it. Okay. Okay, thank you uh, very much, Simon. Good night, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to join the Force, Force 11, Okay, so now we can see the kind of files rather than the presentation. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, on these occasions, I will share uh, my views as the researchers and also uh, accountant, as an accountant and lecturers regarding the accounting during and, and in the pandemic. The perspective that I will use is from a digital approach. And the title of my presentation is a COVID-19 and future of accountancy, accounting in the digital perspective. Uh, Agung, just sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to check you're aware we can see your kind of file explorer rather than the actual presentation. Okay. Uh, if you've got multiple screens, it may be that you're sharing the wrong screen. Okay, okay, uh, uh, please wait. And sure. Opening this one. Still loading, Simon. Can you uh, okay. please write? Yeah. Sure. Do you want to try emailing me a copy of your a copy of the oh. slides, and I can I could share them on my screen if that's a backup. Yep, yep. Right. We got a we we we've got loads of time, so no 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 worries. Mm -hmm.
at perfect. Okay. Yes, thank you very much for being patient. Okay, this is my uh, title of my research, COVID-19 and the future of accountancy, accounting in, in, in digital perspectives. So the presentation model that I use may not be like the standard flow yeah, in, the, in general, where a researcher will definitely start from an introduction, the theory, literature review, the analysis, discussion, results, and the conclusions. Uh, however, to achieve this standard, I did uh, what is known as uh, self-reflections, confidence, estimate, uh, projection of my positions as an accountant and researchers in viewing accounting in a pandemic and in the new normal era that uh, for the current today. Of course, there are some limitations to uh, physical data collections, but it can be done online and through a digital approach. So the entire content of this material comes from the use of the social media literature, uh, study literature, justification and interpretation of researcher using a qualitative software, the N5 tools. And I will explain uh, the research based on the analysis taken from the N5. So the presentation agenda for today consists of the pre-introductions, the expectations, introductions, the history of uh, digital revolutions, internet revolution 4.0 to society 5.0, and the current issues, uh, the current issues is a big data. And then the doing research and how social media activities responds in accounting, special, especially in accounting education, and response of accountant in the future and the challenge. Okay, uh, based, on, uh, based on the picture, we can see how the number, the graphic, the development of COVID-19 in the case in the world, especially in Indonesia as of December, 2020, it continues uh, to increase on a daily basis. The, uh, this data needs to be updated per day to day to see the change that have occurred may have decreased or uh, vice versa. And the several countries have carried out vaccination for their citizens and, uh, and of course there are research that can be achieved. Next, uh, I want to see, yeah, I want to see how the internet citizens, yeah, or we call netizens on Facebook social media interact about accounting itself. And one of them is uh, whether accounting is still the dreams of many people, students, prospective students, and they uh, provide various answer, interactions, plus the emoticons. And their answer indirectly brought my talk to the futures and brought accounting into digitalization, industry 4.0 and society 5.0. This is the main uh, background of my research. How is accounting in the future, especially the impact of the current pandemic in the new normal period? Okay. <clears throat> uh, through searching in the through searching on social media, uh, from the the article that is very relevant to the reaction of the accounting profession to COVID nineteen, when I use uh, N five for software to see uh, words, yeah, to see words that of, often appear and are discussed, as in the picture there are the word of uh, policy. You can see the policy, government, business, and events. So in the future, in the future, in, in my next step in my research, we will see how these words, how these words continue to flow and follow the theme of this research. 
in addition to other interesting findings. Okay, uh, apart from using the word cloud uh, by n for software, I'll, I also use the word tree, which usually helps for qualitative researchers in conducting semantic analysis or text uh, based on text, yeah, textually analysis. For example, whether there is a case, a causal relationship giving meaning in textually. Like what I did in, uh, in looking for the problem issues and challenge for accountant in the pandemic and what is most important accountants do and through search by text query, I can explore more themes based on semantically. In the next steps, I uh, I took was to build cluster, yeah, through cl cluster analysis also within Pipo. This method can be done in two ways, uh, namely manually and auto coding. So at this time, I did with auto coding and obtained the result result of several new new themes, new theme uh, such as text, which is often disclose along with the categories that follow. So the result is still in line with the analysis uh, carried out uh, previously. In the visually, the results of the analysis according uh, to coding and categorization can be seen as uh, shown in the picture, shown in the pictures. This is the text, yeah, the text as a code and business as the code based on the word a uh, word cloud uh, analysis. Okay. Uh, after making initial observation to social media, several basic themes can be identified that refer to the use of digital digitalizations. While in the two picture are the condition we are uh, facing now, how the development of the industrial revolution began, began in England and society 5.0 in Japan. We are increasingly uh, racing with information technology and digitalization, social and economic innovation that result in smart society. It is a systematic process uh, that we are dealing with. So uh, this is the industrial revolution 4.0 resulted in a view by uh, Beres Live and Feng Gu with the title of book, The End of Accounting. Do we accept uh, the end of the accounting? So certainly we need a more in depth and comprehensive analysis as well as through uh, further research. And in this book, he provides an empirical analysis related to financial report and what is referred uh, to referred to as strategic asset. This is, uh, in my research, I also look at the result of some previous research, for example, in, uh, for, for example, from Roger uh, Burit. The research interpreting the industry, uh, Burit, his, in his opinion, connected the industrial revolution 4.0 with the environmental accountings. So in, in summary, he also mentioned that the industrial revolution, apart from having an impact of environmental accounting and also related to education sector and intra-organizational setting such as uh, in value chains. This is the uh, cyber uh, physical systems, yeah, cyber physical system from Durit regarding the industrial 4.0, related to the uh, computation, communication, and control in the information system. The benefit of a cyber physical system, several and more efficient systems, reduce the cost of building and operating the systems, build complex systems that provide new capabilities, reduce cost of computation, networking, and sensing. And the last one enables national or global scales of CPS. 
uh, the subsequent development along with the industrial revolution and society 5.0 are advanced advances toward big data nowadays all scientists uh, aspect seems to be connected with the big data as we can see in the picture what is the position of big data today and in the future and also various articles which are the biggest uh, biggest challenge in the world of accounting and are the focus of uh, my next my next research this is still big question where is the accounting position regarding to the industrial uh, revolution to big data okay this is the the phenomenon of uh, growth of big data well we we can see that that data can be divided into structures and unstructured data okay uh, based on the uh, uh, phenomenon the counting in implication can be described that the, the counting implication uh, can be described to big data cloud computing the globalization of sorting accounting services and evolving regulation for example in tax regulation form of corporate reporting and integrated reporting regulations okay this is the uh, the keywords for this study yeah the keyword for this study i put in the social media uh, the keyword is accountant and new normals an accountant and COVID-19 and accounting and COVID-19. So uh, based on the keyword, yeah, in the social uh, in the social media, especially in Twitter, we have the result, the result of uh word cloud, yeah, word cloud, word cloud, we can see in the uh, in the word cloud that the result are uh, the uh, digital accounting, the response the the pandemic and also the the case the finance yeah we just focus on the digital digitally accounting and response of uh, accounting in the pandemic in the thematic analysis we can see that the accounting impact yeah the response in accounting about uh, in covid 19 yeah this is the big themes the big themes taken from the analysis is pandemic, health, digital, and response. And also when I uh, search or type with the keyword accountants, new normal accounting and COVID, we can see the, yeah, the, the, the information, the information from one of the account in the Twitter, yeah, the embrace the new normals yeah the embrace of new normal the disruption as an opportunity yeah we can see the disruption is opportunity to push the organization forward to adapt and innovate okay this is uh, the other information the important information this is very essential yeah to innovate and deliver value for the organizations. Okay, this is also the essential uh, point. Uh, uh, the, the new normal, uh, what about the finding in the new normal? The accounting need to be uh, need to be changed, yeah, need to be changed the organizations, the the activities, yeah, the running accounting practices and process, and with the experiment with with different options okay so uh, in the other uh, information the important issues what happened in accounting in the in the new normals yeah, after the pandemic uh, one of the uh, accountant yeah accountant uh, the public accountant the kpmg uh, KPMG post in the in uh, in the in the Twitter that accounting in the new normal still uncertainty. Yeah, the, the uncertainty is the uh, the key point for this resource. 
okay and also the big uh, the big change is not going to be moving to the cloud or figuring out artificial intelligence or using data analytics to create a new service line the big change is going to be recognizing that change is now uh, permanent or uh, and frequent so the building a firm that is smart enough to recognize the next change that's coming and nimble enough to make the most of it. So accountants are actually good at change. They need core compute, uh, competency from these results. And uh, the, the comment, the, the, comment the, uh, the important information also taken from Lee Kuan Yew Center in Institute of Singapore Chartered Accountants. Yeah. Within the next three or five years, there could be a wider adoption of technology as robotic process automatization, artificial intelligence, advanced analytics, big data, and the blockchain. This is the estimate, this is the projection uh, from, the new, uh, from the pandemic to the new normal in the next three or next three to five years. So what happened in digit, digitalization in finance and accounting? This is also from a uh, result, yeah, result that I obtained from the social media. Account, uh, the account, digitalization in finance and accounting, we remote workforce dealing with the uncertainty, the efficiency, uh, looking ahead and leading the change. And also, uh, uh, we, uh, I found that the, uh, the accounting is a compilation, uh, com compilation of personal reflection from 66 contribu contributor on the impact and respond to COVID-19 accounting education in 45 different countries around the world. So uh, in the accounting learnings, yeah, we need generate new knowledge to inform the scholarship of accounting teaching and learning in our future hybrid operating environments. So the, uh, especially in the accounting education, they need to respond to global crisis with a crisis management center. This is the four phases of the COVID-19 crisis. Yeah, stabilization, uh, uh, the crisis uh, response, stabilization, recovery, and re redesign. Okay, this is the model of a hybrid learning integrated approach for the accounting uh, education. In the mode one, in academic orientation, the academic and theory, and mode two, in market driven, we orientation to companies and instrumental practice. And then uh, the mode one and the mode two, uh, going to the mode three, the hybrid. Uh, hybrid learning, hybrid learning integrated approach that orientation to the community. Uh, this is the examples of uh, also for the digitalization in the agricultures, also in the agricultures, the systems effects in the finance, human resource, marketing, and uh, suppliers. Okay. What a new norm in accounting. Uh, this is the discussions of my research. So the new norm in accounting, the power of disruption for positive change. Uh, accountants are no longer just bookkeepers. Yeah, better use the technology, create better accountants, and also they need technological uh, com uh, competence, and uh, for the the mass shift to remote work, yeah, remote work increasingly distributed and the current economic downturn has not slowed investment in automatization and artificial intelligence. And we did the finance function, big data and robotic process automatization have been particularly successful in increasing organizational efficiency and enabling finance professional to build on their proficiencies around data governance and analysis. And, and uh, from uh, McKinsey and the company, uh, now is the time for Indonesia especially to consider the various trend that, trends that will define into the uh, next normals. 
this is the what our government yeah our government uh our our government activities uh to reform yeah itself after the covid 19 uh crisis so uh from current student to experienced professionals yeah accountant must uh, focus of uh, focus on reskilling uh, res and upskilling for the futures the student must uh, obtain the certification with the, in the relevant program, uh, relevant programs, emphasize analysis, strategy, and leadership. And also, the accountant must be uh, ex expand their capabilities. The university and the educational institute are adapting their cu curriculum and also certifications. Yeah, international certified for accountant, for example, certified management accountant risk management, professional ethics, and others. Okay, this is the, uh, the confluence of factors impacting on graduate career sustainability. And this is the core that accountant needs, especially in management accountants, uh, the, the technical skill, cognitive skill, and social and behavior uh, skill, and also, IT skills and management skills. So uh, based on the survey that I uh, found that talents, yeah, for the talents is the tax and regu regulatory compliance. This is the uh, similar result, what I expected in the uh, previous, yeah, uh, previous, uh, the pre-observation before, before I conduct the study. So this is, I think this is a 2022 skills outlook uh, 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 still running on, on today. Uh, the analytical thinking and innovation is uh, the, the most uh, important for our uh, students, yeah, for, for, uh, especially in accounting. So they need to uh, access more digital access, yeah, for example, the books, uh, join the webinars or uh, join the webinar, international conference. And uh, also this is the, the important, the, the key points, yeah. Accounting for the future, still in the big conversation for today and the next uh, future is a climate, yeah. Climate and the capitalist, uh, and the capital, and the capitalism. This is the role of the accountancy professions. So, uh, the conclusion of uh, my research: digitization, hyperconnectivity, a more globalized workforce, and cloud-based accounting solution are driving huge change across the industries. And we can either respond to these changes and leverage their benefit, or stay root in their old-fashioned way of operating as slowly succumbs to the death of the traditional accountings. Change is hard, but not changing is even harder. While digital transformation may take months or even years to complete for the best. And the, for the best is uh, time to start uh, is today. So this is the, uh, the further readings, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, Agung. Thanks there for, for the presentation, very interesting. Um, we're a little bit pushed for time, so that I noticed one question uh, earlier from um, Danny. Um, basically related, I, I did notice actually she, soon after she posted it, there was a slide with AI on it, um, but her question was about chat GPT, and I, and I guess AI more generally um, is being predicted as something that will end many professions. Um, is this something that the accounting profession is also concerned about? Okay, thank you. Uh, good question, Danny. I, I think the chat GPT also not, uh, not issue, just issues for the accounting, but maybe in the many aspects, in many <coughs> uh, uh, many subjects, yeah, it's not just in accounting. Uh, so, chat GPT, I think, yeah, we we need to we we aware about the chat GPT, but we now what the the function of the chat uh, the chat GPT, especially in the accounting ed education, we need to. Uh, we need to more focus what our, our student did 
or for example when when they uh, do homework and then we try to uh, uh, to upload their work into the Turnitin, yeah, the Turnitin, the plagiarism checkers. So I think, uh, yeah, uh, we try to uh, we try to be uh, smart. Yeah, we try to be smart as a lecturers, as a teachers for what our students, uh, what our student did with their homework, for example. So. The turn it in the plagiarism uh, checker also concerned about this. So when we uh, uh, currently when we try to check our uh, our article our paper to the turn it in, they also uh, provide the the percentage of uh, paper is it uh, is it done by by humans or by artificial intelligence. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's uh, really concerned about, uh, really concerned about this. And in my, in my accounting uh, profession also, uh, try to learn, learn more about the chat GPT and uh, affect to the accounting profession, because we must uh, aware, we must, uh, careful with the decision making yeah especially for the de decision making of uh, uh, from the report or from the issues thank you thank okay, you okay thank you very much um i think we've come up to uh, almost the end of the session and, and we'll have a couple of minutes i think the next session is just about to uh, st uh, to start uh, and that's the second lightning talks um session um so i'd just like to to say another thank you particularly to agung and also to um sandy and richie for their talks um and thank you everyone for for coming uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference